So to follow along my footsteps here, you have to check out uh, version 016 here to get to the place I am in the code. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, start out by figuring out this problem we have right here. So let me just add a few more guys. Doesn't matter what it says. And I say add, nothing happens. I have to do a refresh. So let's start out by, by fixing that by using some socket IO code. Um, and socket IO, you can, uh, you can look that up if you wanna dig into details. Um, socket.io. And in here, there's a really good tutorial on how to make a chat application if you wanna try it on its own. We're going to now use socket IO to make um, this reload instantly, meaning that it not only will it reload in my browser, it likes to reload in anybody's browser who is connected to our setup here. So let's um, let's try and just give you a, the very brief discussion of socket IO here, just to make an understanding of how it works. Now we have, of course, both a server and a client side. We have to let the server inform any clients listening that something has changed. And we have the client side listening for those changes, right? So you need to have both sides to make this work. Now inside the backend here, we actually inside our syllabus automatically got something called syllabus socket JS. Now this is the event system that we're using and this is rather complex and I don't want to discuss that with you right now. All you have to understand is this guy, this syllabus socket JS together with the event um, JS file here, they actually make it so that we can use socket IO in the backend. Okay, so we can send some different events. And the ones we have set up default is a save and a remove. And, um, and there's also, so here we have the events save and remove. Those are the two events that we're listening for right now. So I save the changes when I add a new guy and that's why I get an event back. Okay, but you can look into these if you wanna dig into more details. And I guess we'll get back to those later as well. But that's the backend part of it. Another place to look is socketio.js. This is more of the setup of socketio. Okay, um, let's look at the client side instead because it doesn't take that much for us to actually make it work. We have under components, we have a socket folder and in here we have a service. Don't worry about the mock one, that's for testing. But we have one called socket service and that's pretty much saying whatever model name, in our case it'll be syllabus, whatever model name we have, colon save then you'll actually go in and find the old item you'll find the index for that item and then you'll splice it meaning that you'll will remove the item that is now outdated and add push the new item into it if that doesn't make sense try and, and figure out what splice and push is all about and then we'll do a callback so what we need to do is we need to go into our controller and add a few lines of code and that's what I'm going to do now. Now, what code did I add? First of all, we're going to do another dependency injection here. Right here, we're doing the socket dependency injection. Now, what else do we need to do? We need to use that dependency injection to say, I want to synchronize with updates. And then whenever an update occurs, I want you to update the syllabus array that we have locally right here. Okay, that's why we're passing it in. So let's look at socket sync updates. So if I go down to the socket service, no magic here, sync updates, I'm getting in a model name. And what's the model name here? Syllabus. Okay. Back to the service. I'm getting in an array. Okay. Let's go back here. An array. That's the scope that syllabus is. That means that's the array of syllabuses I want to update. And then the last thing that we did not use in our case is we could use a callback to get information when we're actually done setting this up and then on any change of that model name whenever the server tells me a syllabus has changed i will then go in and update that array behind the scenes without you even noticing it good let's try and save this that was the first part i had to do now to make sure that your client doesn't keep um, listening for updates even though you shut it down we also say on destroy whenever the scope is destroyed then we want to unsync everything with the syllabus again. So it's pretty much just saying, stop listening when the scope is destroyed. Good. Let's see if it works. That's all I have to change. And now hopefully when I add something now, 
it should refresh it right away. Let's try it out. Add a syllabus and there it pops up right away. So that now you actually not only have synchronization running, but you also have it using Socket.io, meaning a cross of clients. Meaning that if I have another client here, let me just try and show you. So the point is that when I add something here, you'll notice that it pops up over here as well. Okay, so we're in sync. That's the goal of it. So that's Socket.io for you. Congratulations, you made your first Socket.io application. See you next time.